Hello. Surprise! This was kind of a uh, pop-up <laughs> video. Isn't that what they call the the restaurants that the just all of a sudden they're there and call them a pop-up. It comes from nowhere, goes nowhere. Well, this is coming from nowhere, but I'm hoping it'll take somewhere. It's just going to be a little quickie tonight. Uh, as, as well, it should be because last night was long. Again, well, first of all, in case you've never watched one of our videos, this is Embracing Change, and my name is Reverend Alicia Leslie from Spirit of Unity Church. Spirit of Unity takes a metaphysical look at everyday lives. Today I'm going to give you some great tips on interpreting your life and everything in it metaphysically. Now if you like our video, you can click that like button. You can also see many more on YouTube and if you subscribe, you'll make sure to see every video that comes out. I think that pretty much says it. So, like I said, I'm in my jammies. I wasn't really planning this until I saw uh, that, oh, may the fourth be with you uh, meme. And it really rang a bell in my head about something I wanted to share with you. Um, and that is about becoming aware of interpreting things metaphysically. Metaphysics is a philosophy based on the theory that the universe makes sense. It is governed by spiritual principle, which are the unseen ideas and energies that we use to create our lives and the world we live in consciously or unconsciously. And one of the reasons we are here is to learn and to grow. To learn and to grow not only as individuals but as a collective. You know that they say that uh, the water in a barrel uh, with holes in it can only rise to the level of the lowest hole. Why? Because it gets up there and it just keeps draining out and draining out and it'll never get higher. In our consciousness there are, shall we say, holes or missing parts. Uh, and when I use the word consciousness, to be conscious is to be awake. It's to be aware of, you know, there's a real simple metaphysical interpretation. When you uh, wake up in the morning, you open your eyes and you become aware of everything around you, sights, sounds, your brain starts generating maybe your to-do list or maybe just joy at morning. My morning, I get excited because I'm going to go get my coffee. And I'm going to come back to my bed. And I'm going to spend some time having a visit and coffee with God. Now, a lot of people think that in order to be praying, you've got to be in church and you've got to use a lot of big words and these thousand thou shalts and shalt nots must be included. Can you imagine if we all tried to communicate in, in the language of days gone by, my sister and I were talking uh, today about how the days, you know, meanings of words can become so twisted over time. The farther you get away from the original meaning of a word, the harder it is to interpret your life. What is it they say, a rose by any other name would be so sweet? What if, or would the, the fragrance have inspired that sound? See, because we're looking behind the words that come out of our mouths to the, the, um, what do they call it, the, um, uh, the archetypes 
the ideas, the divine ideas that are within us. God is the creator of all divine ideas and we receive and use them accordingly for better or worse. So you're going to make a lot better decisions if you are awake than if you are not. If you are educated than if you are not. If you are aware you will make better decisions. And if what is it I always say to use? Use your critical thinking. But as you come to use critical thinking and you start to understand the metaphysics behind it, <laughs> everything explodes for good. You're not watching this by chance. You're watching this by divine appointment, whether it's right now at, what, 9 o'clock on Wednesday night, or whether it's a day, 10 days, or 10 years from now, the time is right for you to hear this message. And Lord knows the time was right for me to bring you this message. So, May the Fourth Be With You is, of course, about Star Wars. We all love Star Wars, don't we? Well, you know, I had one of my spiritual awakenings during the movie Star Wars. It was the first one. And Obi-Wan Kenobi was standing with Princess Leia. And they were looking into some kind of a a telescope or something like that. And all of a sudden, he leaned back and he shuddered. And he said, there is a disturbance in the force. Now, metaphysically, Obi-Wan Kenobi means one who is tuned in, who knows what's going on, who understands uh, you know, the, the metaphysical things, the spiritual things. We don't have to say metaphysical. If you don't like that term, it's okay. We can say the spiritual principles. He was wise and understood that. And even though he wasn't there and what was happening when Princess Leia's planet blew up was probably light years away, whatever, he felt the energy. Now, Within each one of us is the wise part. It is the part that can discern energy. Did you ever walk down the street and you approach someone and you just felt an energy coming from them that was so negative that you wanted to cross the street? It wasn't the way they looked. It wasn't anything they said. You just felt that energy. Whether it was that the person had really negative stuff going on or they were just having a bad day or, you know, whatever. You felt that energy and it was unpleasant. That's what we want to develop. And we develop that through the understanding of looking at the, the deepest parts of everything. Now, I'm not going to go into... To, Everything about metaphysics tonight, as a matter of fact, like I said, tonight I'm keeping it short. So, basically, each one of us as individuals and all of us as a collective are experiencing what is called a hero's journey. If you want to know more about the hero's journey, you can look up Joseph Campbell. Who, who created this concept. He just discovered something that is in action all the time. I'm going to hope that you listen to this again, maybe, and make notes of the various aspects of, this, of the hero's journey. I'm going to use the smallest parts tonight. That the journey begins. There is a hero. that would be you. <laughs> And the hero begins on a journey. 
And there's all kinds of adventures and exciting things and unfulfilled potentials and mysteries and danger on their journey. And as the journey continues, it's like a circle and the hero is coming down and goes through a threshold into danger. Danger, crisis, what did we talk about crisis is? It is both danger and opportunity. So he has to face a lot of scary things. And he comes down to the lowest part where the greatest challenges are. And then he begins his journey back up higher. Now, if he learned and grew in this process, he comes back up, strengthened, excited, going to rest a little and move his journey even farther along. You see, life is not a destination. Our mission is not even a destination. It is a journey, and it's a hero's journey. Now, on that hero's journey, as the hero goes into darkness, there are many scary things. The darkness is the unknown. You and I all have parts of our lives that are unknown. It can be we don't know the future. It can be we don't know what's going on at work or in a relationship or if we're going to get COVID or if we're going to straighten out and have peace. It's a journey, an ongoing, eternal journey that you have your choice of being the hero. Now, I don't know how to tell you this, but as well as you the hero, every person, place, and thing in a story, when you're looking at it spiritually or metaphysically, has a meaning. It represents something and even a part of yourself. Okay, my battery is low. So I, um, gee whiz, I was hoping to be done, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do is I am very quickly, forgive me, I'm going to plug in because I don't want to try to stitch again. I did that all day today. Hold on one moment. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, now you know some people will be very professional about that and they would, you know, uh, find a way to um, edit that out later, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Last night my power went off in the middle of my video and uh, I literally spent hours today trying to get it in the right order and upload it, which I did do, but it took a long time. So let's get back to our hero's journey. I'll take a brief, brief look at the story of Adam and Eve, because that's how two people in a story can be a part of you. Males in stories represent the thinking faculty and females represent the feeling or emotional part of our of our being so and it it takes you know like it takes two to to conceive uh life if you have an idea or a plan or a vision that you want to manifest it is very important that you have not only the thought, but also the feeling so that manifestation or creation can happen. Okay, so that's why different people, you have to look at the gender as a part of the story to see what's going on. Now, let's look at the basic characters. Obi-Wan Kenobi was wise. He was in touch 
with the unseen, with the with the higher higher uh, energy, the higher teaching, very connected to what the force, the light side of the force. Now, see, the force has two sides. It has the light side and the dark side. And just like in life, we have enlightenment and we have unknowing or ignorance or the dark side. We can't see in the dark, whereas in the light, as Obi-Wan Kenobi, he could, he could just see everything. So Luke Skywalker is a, he's gone to Obi-Wan Kenobi for, for help. He wants to, he wants to be a, um, a Lord. <laughs> he wants to be one of their good guy fighters that just brain fart. Um, now Princess Leia, on the other hand, who um, he, he doesn't want anything to do with her initially because, uh, you know, she's a girl. And um, and he doesn't want, he's got this mucho macho, he wants to be this mucho march, oh, storm, no, he doesn't want to be a stormtrooper. Well, I know, somebody will tell me, and just in case you're sending me answers in the comments, I can't see them when I video, so you can tell me about it later or put it in the comments. So, Leia represents not only emotion but high high intelligence emotion oh she's not perfect but she's a strong woman she has strong healthy emotions and that kind of scares luke skywalker okay so that's that little piece we're going to go with the little pieces of the story now do you remember when uh obi-wan kenobi had had given um luke skywalker that orb and his lightsaber. Let's look at that word, lightsaber. So he was bringing light with it. And his idea was he blindfolded him and he said, okay, you know, get the orb. Don't let it get you. And Luke Skywalker is with his big fancy lightsaber. And he had to learn to sense it. Not to see it, but to sense it. As we open our, our spiritual awareness, and we always want to keep it what? In the light, to the good, good positive energy. But when you get that, you will pick up those signals. If something's up, you will get a warning that something may be clobbering you at any time. It may be just something you, you pick up when you are around a person or a, a place or a thing. It might be that inkling you get to be extra careful when you're driving your car that day. It is a part of higher awareness. So do you see how everything is telling you a story, even as I said, the light saber. This is all about archetypes. Archetypes are typical examples of people or things okay so luke skywalker is the you know is the um the hero the male figure wants to go and accomplish and he's, he's a commoner and princess leia is royalty and uh yet the two of these have to learn to work together we have to learn to work together in the world we live in, we have to work together. I'm just reading a book called um, Crucial Conversations, and it's very important, especially today with the division we deal with every day, to find a way to have those discussions that talk about difficult things without causing further alienation. So if Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia didn't work, learn to work together, uh, there would be a problem. Now, what about Han Solo? Han Solo is the, you know, he's the adventurer. He's going out there. He's kind of a sort of, he's a good guy, but he's a roughshod, going to do whatever he wants. Well, that kind of represents our own ego. That's that part of us that wants to go out and do whatever we want and be the king of the world and, you know. And uh, I would say Chewbacca's probably just trying to understand people. I think Chewbacca kind of sees things very 
very simply in its simplest form and it's like <laughs> he does not, just doesn't always understand he likes Han Solo but he doesn't always get him um, there's so many directions you can go in but uh, there's always in in a story whether it's a movie a story you're reading a novel or the Bible there are three levels of understanding. The first is the literal level. It's telling a story. Something happened. It has another level, which is the moral. It's the, it's the moral as, uh, part, that aspect. It is something that is good for all of us to know. And that's kind of more like the collective. And then there's the spiritual meaning. Because that's the meaning that is for you alone. If you take a minute before you turn in tonight, and or before you go to your day, if this is morning, and you think about the actions you had during the previous day, the things you said and the things you did, and ask yourself, who was I being there? Was I being Han Solo? Was I being Luke Skywalker? Was I being Princess Leia? She did have a bit of an attitude, you know, about being the princess. She's also really smart. <laughs> Who were you? What were you doing? What was your challenge? And then, it was a couple of uh, shows, movies after that, when Darth Vader says, Luke, I am your father. That this darkest and evil being who was trying to draw Luke Skywalker been fighting him for movie after movie he finds out that's his father could it be any worse he wants to draw him to the dark side the father metaphysically spiritually can represent our past that we have been fighting to overcome and it's encouraging us back there. If you ever broke any really bad habits, um, if you have any things that you've been fighting to overcome, attitudes, addictions, um, emotional bright, you know, bursts or anger management or anything like that, if there's something you've been fighting, it will call you back to the dark side. But you have the power, the light that is within you. Talk about another famous story. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Don't hide your light under a basket. Take that basket off. Put your light on a pedestal so it can shine and others will see it. And you know what? Put your ego down and they will give glory to God. <laughs> to all that is good. The things we do for good in the world are not for personal aggrand aggrand aggrandizement, personal puffy uppy. It is for the glory of all that is good. So if you're uneasy with the word God, replace it with good. Okay? The ultimate good so let that light in you which is love truth wisdom generate that let that light shine forth put it on a pedestal don't hide it and let it be okay that the glory goes to all that is good because this this is not about glory for us it's about being an active participant in creating a world that works for all. Did you know you can do that? You can. So any movie you see, 
Remember, you are the hero. We'll talk about that more another time. But I just had to look, get it when I saw May the 4th be with you. I, I just had to make sure I at least, I at least touched it. You've probably been feeling the disturbance in the force. But that's not the end of the story. Let's heal that disturbance by being the light that we are. So God bless you. Have a good evening. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.